Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This channel, Aware Science, is all about trying to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, we are going to solve this question on lead code regarding server utilization time. The difficulty level of this question is medium, and I'm going to share the SQL schema as well as the Panda schema in the description box below. Okay, the question says we are given a table called servers with three different columns: server ID, status time, and session status. All the three columns combined is the primary key that is combination of columns with unique values for this table. Session status is an enum category that can take values either start or stop. Each row of this table contains the server ID, status time, and the session status. We are asked to write a solution to find the total time when the servers were running. The output should be rounded down to nearest number of full days. Okay, order of the result does not matter. Let's go through this example. So here we have various servers and different status times and the session status. So start, stop, start, stop, and so on. So what we basically need to do is we need to calculate the total time all the servers combined were being utilized and we need to round it to the nearest day okay so to solve this question what we basically need to do is for every server id what you can do is okay so for server id 3 we have four entries two start two stop makes sense now if you look at it right so for first two 4th of november 2023 at 4 around 4 30 in the afternoon it was started and then it ended on 5 November 2023 early in the morning about 1 50 a.m. So you need to count okay what's the time between these and then there is another one on 25th of November 2023 started at 1 37 a.m. and ended at 3 50. So what's the time between this? So you sum that you get for server ID 3 similarly you do for 1 4 and all that and once you have all that information then you basically sum that entire thing and convert it into a day and if you do that you basically get around total uptime days is 1. Okay, let us go ahead and try to do for every server ID, let's rank the start and stop times. So basically let's uh, arrange by the status time in ascending order for start and this will be assigned rank 1 and this will be assigned rank 2 because this is 4th of November, this is 25th of November. Then obviously stops also, this is assigned rank 1 and this is assigned rank 2 and then what we are doing is we are going to merge this so that in a particular line we have the start time as well as the stop time so that we can calculate the difference directly okay now based on the logic i just described there is one question that should come in your mind think about it what i'm going to ask i will just write this and then ask you the same question so from this table called so this table is called servers let us what we are doing is let us keep all the three columns and then try to do let us rank so row number and then over partition by why because we want for every server id so partition by server id as well as the session status so partition by the server id as well as the session status and then order by the status time so what is this basically going to do is so server id 3 and then start rank 1 rank 2 per server id 3 stop rank 1 rank 2 and so on yes we have all the you know threes here as well so it will also take into that but i'm just you know just trying to demonstrate okay so what we are doing is let us alias this as rank let me go ahead and run this and let's see what do we get in our output so now what we have right now here is let me just drag it to the left so you have a ranks for start times all all the start times and then you have stop times okay then my question is what we are doing is consider two examples one so for example let's say there is a server start at 10 and then stop at let's say 12 and then again start at 2 and end stop at 4 okay so what is the total number of hours bit for this particular server so 2 and 2 4 right and if you do the ranking this will be assigned rank 1 and this will be assigned rank 2 why because 10 am is be before 2 pm and then this will be assigned rank 1 and this will be assigned rank 2 if i join this based on the rank so it will assign okay start at 10 stop at 12 start at 2 stop at 4 so in the same line okay this makes sense now think about this let me just you know remove all these ranks and try to give another example and think about this so started at 10 topped at 12 let's say this one started at 11 and then went up till 4 
now in this question it never says that okay this is a start time and this is the particular stop time if you think about it you can calculate the same thing twice there can be a start at 10 and stop at 4 so this is starting and ending at 4 so what is the total number of hours 6 and then there is a start at 11 and stop at 12 so 6 plus 1 7 right and if you do the this one so start at 10 stop at 12 so 2 hours and then start at 11 and stop at 4 that is 5 hours so 5 plus 2 is 7 again right so in this case also this ranking method will work right so that is why this is a generalized solution that we are trying to aim at always try to find a generalized solution okay so let us try to do the same thing using joins so let's save this entire thing in a common table expression so with cteas this entire thing goes into parentheses and then from this common table expression let us firstly what we are doing is so if you look at this right so you have server id status time certain status and rank so let us try to do this from ct alias as c1 let us try to do a left join or a inner join so basically we are doing a self join right a table is joined on itself so inner join cte but this time as c2 on so first thing we are going to do is it is going to be the same server right that makes sense so c1 dot server id is equal to c2 dot server id then also that and rank should be equal as well so c1 dot rank is equal to c2 dot rank let us try to have so let us return c1 dot server id c1 dot status time and let us try to have c1 dot session status c2 dot status time c2 dot session status okay let me go ahead and run this as well so now what you have is let me just drag it to the left so right now what we are basically having is so here you have so start once and this is also start times why this is happening like this is because this was is ranked one again if you are joining cte1 on cte2 right so server id is same then rank is also same and therefore what we basically need to do is we also need to make sure that session status should be because these kind of rows are not helpful for us right it is basically start and start so the only thing that we are concerned about is this so we should make sure that okay c1 dot state session status is start and c2 dot certain status is stop and those are the rows that we are considered about let us keep only those rows where c1 dot session status is equal to start and c2 dot session status is equal to stop okay let me go ahead and run this again let's see what do we get in our output so now if we look at it what you have is for a particular server this is the start date this is the stop this is start this is stop and so on once you have all that information what we basically need is we need the difference right so how can we calculate the difference between two date times you can use timestamp difference so timestamp difference right so this was just for demonstration purposes we need basically the difference between c1 dot status time and c2 dot status time right because this is the start time and this is the stop time right so let us try to remove everything else so what i need is timestamp difference in second and then do a difference between c1 dot status time and c2 dot status time and then just remove this session status and let us try to alias this as difference for now right so just to see what we are going to return in our output so here you have various difference right so for every row you have that you do not need that you need the total so what you do is simply sum the entire this so that it's the total seconds that is you server is running so you get a certain number so this is the seconds how can you convert this into days how many seconds a days has 864 24 hours 
every hour has 60 minutes and every minute has 60 seconds so it comes out to be 86400 so you need to divide this by 86400 and that will give you the number of days so let me go ahead and run this again so this is what we have right now 11.94 and this should be aliased as whatever is required in our output however this is not yet complete it's called total uptime days let me just copy this and paste it here so as this entire thing comes here down and we alias this okay but the question says that we also need to round this to nearest number of days the output should be rounded down to the nearest number of full days so basically if it is 11.94 it is not 12 it is 11 full days right so you need to use the floor function so floor of this entire thing and let us now run this and see what do we have in our output okay so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases or not so this is accepted and this is how we do it so very tricky question what we basically had to do was firstly we ranked based on for every server id and the session status and ordered by the status time to say that okay this was the first time it started second time started third time started and so on and we similarly had first time stopped second time stopped and so on once we had that then we basically performed a self join on server id and rank and we saw that if we do that it is possible that a start is joined with the start obviously that does not make any sense so we kept only those rows where session status from first one is a start and second one is a stop so that we have the start time as well as the end time in the same row once we had that then we calculated the difference between those start and stop times in seconds then we summed the entire thing and then we divided by a6400 to get that number of days and since we had to round it to number of full days so we use the floor function so yeah this is how we do it let me know if there's a better more efficient solution to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video